television. I think it's good for the commissioner to have a power, the power to act in the best interest of baseball. But I don't think that this is the case where he should use that power. I think that there are guidelines where teams can vote on issues like this. The teams have voted. The Cubs don't want it. I think we should have a commissioner, not a dictator. Go west, young men. Baseball, worried about the bottom line, is suddenly aware of the Mason-Dixon line and the rest of America's geography, which is why they've asked the Cubs and the Cardinals to go west. Welcome to Philly's Preview, Daily News Extra. Brought to you by Gold Medal Sporting Goods. By your local Topman Transmission dealers. And by the folks who invented Cool Carrier. We're the inside guys. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Carl Turk, and welcome to Philly's Preview. Welcome back to 1948. The Phils and Cubs will be wearing uniforms from that year today, and on August 10th of this year, those unis will be auctioned off as part of the Phillies' annual family charity fundraiser at Veterans Stadium. Now, last night, 35,000-plus at the vet as the Phils beat the Cubs by a final count of 4-1. to one. We'll pick it up in the bottom of the second. One run already in. Terry Mulholland bangs a two-out base hit through the left side. Wes Chamberlain scores, and it's 2-0 Phils. Bottom of the sixth. Now, three-zip when Lenny Dykstra lines one to center. Off Greg Maddox, Mickey Moore and Deanie hustles home as Dykstra steams into second base. Top of the seventh, Mulholland's breaking ball to Ryan Sandberg, heading up and over that wall. See you later time, number 10 for Rhino to make it 4-1. to one. Then on the very next pitch, watch what Andre Dawson does to the pitch. He drills one off Mulholland's glove hand. Terry finishes the inning, but heads for Methodist Hospital, where x-rays reveal he's got a broken bone in his right hand. Now, since Terry's a lefty, probably not as bad as it might have been. Phil's hope he'll only miss one start. Probably wait until July to try for his eighth win. Number seven, Saturday, a 4-1 to victory over the Cubs. A three-hitter for Mulholland through seven innings. Mike Hartley gets him out in the eighth, and wild thing, Mitch Williams in the ninth picks up his 14th save. Like the Phils and Cubs, the Braves and Reds are playing a four-game series this weekend with some semi-serious implications of the future of the 1992 NL West race. At Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, bottom of the first, David Justice showing some signs of breaking out of his slump. He singles in Terry Pendleton to make it 1-0. In the ninth, the Reds' last gasp. Biff Roberts with a short fly ball to left. Ron Gant makes the catch and deflects shortstop Raphael Belliard away from him. He holds on. The Braves hold on to beat the Reds 2-1 to one to move within two and a half games of Cincy in the West. At Arlington Stadium, Kevin Brown's curveball freezes Jack Clark. He's called out on strikes by umpire Dale Ford. Now, this conversation is going to continue a little bit longer. Clark, a 2-16 hitter with a 400 mouth, tosses his bat and helmet. Then Ford tosses him. Well, Clark's not quite finished with those childish pranks. His Red Sox are finished, though, 4-1. to one. The Rangers win at Brown's 10th win. Clark's going to be the big league loser, though, when the fine is announced this week. Time now for our Phillies preview daily news extra play of the week, brought to you by Carrier, the people who invented cool. Out in Anaheim, watch the drive off the bat of the Rangers' Juan Gonzalez. It's heading out of the park till Junior Felix goes up and gets it and brings it back in the ballpark. A closer look now. Felix, a full glove length over the fence with the catch, preserve Mark Langston shutout classy kid that he is, tosses it into the stands, the souvenir it was already destined to be. Coming up, an update on the state of the Phils and a discussion on realignment and interleague play as we continue today on Phillies Preview Daily News Extra and celebrate this day in Phillies history. I'm Mickey Morandini of the Phillies. When I make the plays at second base, I depend on my Rawlings glove. It's a choice of the pros. At Gold Medal Sporting Goods, you'll find a great selection of Rawlings gloves, balls, and equipment. Plus, Gold Medal is the official retail outlets of the Phillies. So team up with Rawlings and me 
at any one of the gold medal sporting goods stores in the Delaware Valley, where you'll find the best service, selection, and prices around. If you think Cotman just fixes automatic transmissions, you're only seeing part of the picture. Cotman also fixes standards and clutches, four-wheel drives, Japanese and Korean imports, RVs, front-wheel drives, European imports, older cars, vans, even pickup trucks. And we'll have your car ready when promised at the price we've quoted. Celebrate our anniversary with our 1962 Preventive Maintenance Service Special. Find me in your local white pages. After 30 years, I'm still your Cotman Moon, Cotman Mon, Cotman Men, Cotman... Hey, lady, want to read my daily news? No, that's quite all right. What's the matter? Not good enough for you? Fine. The Philadelphia Daily News offers compelling coverage of local and national events. Fifteen thought-provoking new features. And bullets are winning editorials. Hey, lady, aren't you, uh, forgetting something? Sorry. Keep it. The Philadelphia Daily News. It's going to surprise a lot of people. Captain Rex spectacular carpet and flooring sale. Right now, carpet three rooms of DuPont certified stain master for just $499 installed with padding. Call 1-800-2-CAPTAIN for your free in-home estimate. We'll come to your home day or evening to measure and show you samples of all your favorite styles and colors priced at huge savings right in the comfort of your own home. Plus, you buy today, we'll install tomorrow. Call now, 1-800-2-CAPTAIN. Easy financing and credit cards accepted. Welcome back to Philly's Preview Daily News Extra Time. Now to introduce our panel of experts today. Here in the studio to my left, Daily News columnist Stan Hockman. Welcome, Stan. And down at the ballpark, Daily News beat writer Paul Hagan. And from the Chicago Sun-Times, Cubs beat writer Tony Gianetti. Paul, while we're down at the vet already, we're going to start with you. With 30 and 35, the Phil's still well within striking distance of the 500 record and season that most of us probably thought they would have at this, this point in this year. But did they have enough pitching to complete that? Well, they've got a lot of pitching. How, how good is it going to be is the question. Um, I think the, you know, the, the stat that I think says everything about what's going on with the Phillies this year is that Mickey Weston and Pat Combs are going to be the 11th and 12th different starting pitchers they've used this year. And, you know, you can twist stats around a lot of different ways, but I think that tells you just about everything you need to know about this team. Yeah, Kyle Abbott, 0-7 before he was sent back down to Scranton, where he was, I think, what, 4-1? and one, And Pat Combs comes back... The last chance for both of them, maybe? Oh, I don't think so. I think uh, they're both good young left-handed pitchers, and uh, I, I don't think that it's a last chance situation for either one of them, but I, I think that the Phillies are really hoping and expecting that Kyle Abbott particularly is going to go out and have a good game this afternoon. Do you think either one of them perceive this as a last chance with this organization, at least for this season, well, I mean, and, and consequently might put some excess pressure on themselves. The, the, only, the only reason that it might be considered that is because at the end of the season with the expansion in the winter, the, the Phillies are going to have to protect just 15 players and obviously there are going to be some, some pretty good players that aren't going to be protected. So maybe in that sense it's the last chance for this organization. But I don't think it's, it's really that kind of a situation they put pressure on themselves. Okay, Tony Gianetti, tell us from your perspective, from more of a national perspective, how are the Phillies perceived throughout the country and most specifically in Chicago by Cubs fans? You know, it's funny, I, I picked the Phillies to win this division before the season started. You're the started. one. <laughs> and uh, the, the problems that you're having are um, opposite of the problems that the Cubs are having. I think the Phillies, the Mets, um, Montreal, St. Louis, everybody in this division except for maybe Pittsburgh is, um, I think the perception is that they're all kind of equal at this point, and, and we see that in the standings, everybody's playing around with trying to get to 500. Um, the, the Phillies have been decimated in their pitching. The Cubs have real strong pitching this year. They, they're tops in the National League, which is something they never thought would happen. They were hoping to just improve off being the worst staff in the National League last year. Um, they have no hitting, and that's not typical of the Cubs. They have three hitters in the lineup, and everybody else is struggling to get to 200. Uh, okay, they Tony. were hurt. All right, we appreciate that. We're going to go to a break right now. Coming up, the discussion heats up. The topic, realignment, as we check out the batting leaders in the National League as Phillies preview. Daily News Extra continues. <laughs>
tasting fruit juices and drinks. Well, air conditioner, it's out there purring like a kitten. Things solid as a rock. Never think about it. The best time to think about your air conditioning is now. So call your carrier dealer today. We're the guys who know best when it comes to making it better inside. Electric bills getting you down? Install a high-efficiency Carrier Tech 2000 air conditioner and save up to 40% on your utility bill. In Pennsylvania or Delaware, call 215-CARRIER. In New Jersey, 609-CARRIER for your local carrier dealer. Tonight, treat yourself to a Bundy sandwich. Two episodes of Married with Children with a series premiere of Down the Shore in between. First, Kelly's on Cable. Today's topic, cute butts and the men they're attached to. Then, hit the beach with three guys, three girls in one beach house. What's the worst that could happen? Down the Shore. And the Bundys hit Hollywood. Are you really the guy in Home Alone? On part two of Married with Children. Have a Bundy sandwich tonight on Fox. If the Cubs would move, we'd go along with them. That's a great rivalry of ours, as you know, but uh, uh, I'm sure the Cubs um, don't want to move. I've found that out, as we all have. They, uh, they don't want to make the move, and uh, I don't know how it's going to end up. We, uh, we really agreed to it only because uh, so many people told us it would be in the best interest of the game and baseball, and it uh, makes sense, obviously, uh, because we're both uh, further west than Cincinnati and Atlanta, but uh, uh, it probably won't be done because it makes too much sense. Uh, I don't see any problem. Just put one team in the West and one team in the East. And uh, the Cubs and the Cardinals have been in the East for so long. And uh, Cincinnati and Atlanta has been in the West so long. And uh, that solves the problem. If uh, the Cubs w would agree to it, uh, you know, we'd go along. That's, that's the bottom line to it. But we wouldn't want to move by ourselves. Just have one club ourselves move over there and either Cincinnati or Atlanta come into the Eastern Division. Uh, that probably wouldn't work. How much does it matter to you to see the Cubs stay in the NL East? Well, it, it will be good for, for WGN because I'm a part of that network, you know. But, uh, you know, it, it, it really it really is a good thing because the fans have been so supportive. And I know a lot of fans don't want to stay up that late to see the Cubs play out on the West Coast. Well, as we continue our Phillies preview, Daily News Extra, Stan, realignment. In the best interest of baseball? The Cubs the fans don't want to stay up so late because their games will put them to sleep. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, if expenses are involved, if it's a question of cost and finances, the move makes sense. I don't want to hear about tradition because there is no tradition in baseball anymore when you've got two leagues playing by different sets of rules. They've established a new tradition, they would say. Well, it, 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 let them move. You don't worry about tradition. You're adding teams in Florida and Denver and... Go ahead and make the move because it makes sense. Are the Cubs stonewalling? Isn't it really about... Oh, sure. And they have the right under the Constitution to, to squelch it. If one team involved in such a dramatic move doesn't approve, they have the right to veto it. And they've done that. Paul Hagan, Commissioner Faye Vincent, is talking about using his absolute powers to force this move of the Cubs and the Cardinals. What are the possible ramifications if he has to enact what he considers his powers in the best interest of baseball? Well, commissioners have historically been able to do that, um, but we also have to remember that the commissioner works for the owners, and if he upsets enough owners, and obviously he's putting himself on some shaky ground, he's got to be reelected in a year or two, and uh, so I don't know if he really wants to push it that far. I think the other thing we have to consider is, is let's say he does that, he takes that radical step, mm -hmm. and now in a year or two the Giants end up moving into the eastern time zone, then what do you do? Then do you realign again? I mean, I think might, the, the best thing might be to do is just wait and see what happens with the Giants and then go from there. Well, the deadline is July 1st, right? We're, we're going to have a decision by then? Well, that's my understanding that a, a schedule for next year has to be um, put into place by then, although I guess you can always push, push a deadline back, but... Uh, you know, it's not just the realignment. It's, is it going to be a balanced schedule, or are you going to play more games against teams in your own division? Tony Giannetti, you would be the one of all of us would be most specifically impacted by this move. But more importantly, WGN, the world's greatest newspaper, the TV superstation, they're all part of one big happy family making a whole lot of money. This whole thing is really about television revenues, isn't it? Very much so, and uh, there was another interesting thing that happened this week, um, I should say last week, um, an item about the, the Detroit Tigers having to borrow $5 million off baseball's line of credit to meet their payroll. You know, a lot of teams are hurting revenue-wise, and we're seeing that more and more now. There are a number of teams up for sale, and fewer
fewer, fewer and fewer buyers out there. Tribune Company has a very profitable deal going in this synergistic system that they have of the newspaper, the television station, the radio station, and the Cubs. The Cubs are programming for two of their broadcast outlets. They're very important programming for WGN television. And to lose the advertising revenue that WGN would with later starting games on the West Coast means uh, they can't charge as much for primetime television. They're going to lose money. Is there the any talk? Also talked about, excuse me. Is, is there any talk about possible litigation because the GN has a monopoly in this case and, and they may be trying to protect it? Well, I don't know um, how wh what the legal ramifications would be. You know, a Tribune company is one company that has um, grandfather protection under the FCC to, to have a monopoly. There aren't, that isn't allowed anymore in the communications business. Television uh, uh, um, communications companies can't own newspapers and television stations in the same market. But Tribune Company is one of uh, two or three companies that has um, an exemption to that. I think we would find um, the Cubs trying to do everything they could to block a forced realignment. And I, I just don't know um, how strongly the commissioner feels about trying to take on Tribune Company. Of course, he has his own uh, 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 opinions about superstations as well, and, and I'm sure that that's not divorced from this issue. Okay, Tony, thank you very much. In just a moment, we're going to mix the subject of interleague play into this equation. But right now, as we head to the timeout, a look at the leading home run hitters in the National League on today's special edition of Philly's Preview Daily News Extra. Compared to the Honda Accord, the competition is still a bit behind the times. They can't compete in popularity. They can't compete in reliability. And now that you can lease an Accord LX sedan for just $199 a month, we doubt they can compete in price. Or looks, for that matter. The Great Wheels Great Deals lease, right now at your Tri-State Honda dealer. So, what do you think about the Cardinals this year? They're wonderful, aren't they? If you ask me, the Reds could cause some trouble again. Well, let's hope the Soviets are history. How about those Royals? I doubt Prince Andrew will ever recover. With its in-depth coverage of local and national events, there's a lot to read in the Philadelphia Daily News, even if you don't read it for the sports. Well, what about Billy's chances? It's going to take a heck of a year from Rendell. The Philadelphia Daily News. It's going to surprise a lot of people. Welcome back to Philly's Preview Daily News Extra. For years, the subject has been debated. Should there be interleague play in baseball? Well, down at the park the other day, I talked with Hall of Famer Billy Williams and Phil's skipper Jim Fergosi, who seemed to make a pretty good case for it, to me anyway. Uh, a lot of people in the, in the, uh, the National League a long time ago didn't get a chance to see uh, Mickey Mantle or Roger Maris, those particular players play. And of course, from the National League, you had so many great players that a lot of people from the American League didn't get a chance to see play unless it was the All-Star game. And of course, that's not in competition. You're having fun in the All-Star game. I would love to see that, you know, that, uh, you know, you don't have to play a nine ball game. Just mm -hmm. come over and play maybe six ball games home and home. Right. And uh, just give them an opportunity to give the other league an opportunity to see those great players where they can measure those players against uh, the different leagues. I just think that someday that both the American National League have to play under the same rules. I think that uh, there should be one president of the baseball and one commissioner. I think that uh, the natural rivalries would probably uh, be more uh, of an interleague play type of situation. I mean, those are my ideas. A lot of people like to see that. You know, they talk about the National League they've been the, been the, uh, the big league and, and, of course, the dominant league, and, of course, the American League being the, the uh, junior circuit. And now if you do these kind of things, you won't have to guess anymore. You know who, <laughs> who's a better league. Oh, Paul Hagen, let's try and answer that question. First, for you, I have a two-parter. Would interleague play be good for baseball, and might it have any impact on realignment? Well, I, I had heard a couple years ago, Carl, that at least in the minds of some owners, that they were not in favor of expansion unless it included some kind of re, um, interleague play. Uh, obviously, that didn't happen this time. Um, I know Stan said throw out tradition in baseball. I don't really agree with that. I like the tradition in baseball such as it is. I like the fact that there are two separate leagues, that this is the only sport where when you get to the World Series that you haven't uh, played the team, the one team in the National League hasn't played the one team in the American League 
during the regular season. I like that. I think it adds something to the World Series. And I'm also a little troubled by the idea that if you have some form of limited interleague play, you can have a situation where the teams in a division are not necessarily going to be playing the same schedule. The Phillies might play the Yankees in, a, in an up year, and, and the Cardinals may play a, an Ameri a Kansas City, say, when Kansas City's in a down year, so they're not really playing the same schedules. So I'm personally not in favor of it, but as soon as television says they'll pay more money for it, I'm sure it's going to happen. <laughs> Television's always the bad guy, huh, Stan? Rivalries like the Phillies and the Orioles and Cubs and Brewers seem like they'd be fun to me. If you could, if you could play those games, wouldn't it enhance baseball's No, it would be dreadful. It would be terrible. I'll take the other side. In a half hour, I can switch sides. Yeah, it's I've the, noticed the magic that of over television. the yeah. I hope, and that's Paul hinted, that the World Series has already been diluted by these long playoffs. Right. Now you're going to dilute it further by having teams face each other during the year. The charm and suspense of deciding on an ultimate champion, they shouldn't have played during the year. You sound like you're a traditionalist again. Sure, I can take both sides. <laughs> it seems to me, though, just look how close we are to Baltimore and with Camden Yards, the new park, so many, you know, they're in competition. The Phillies are already in competition with the dollar, sports dollars. With, yeah, with and the if Orioles. the Philly fans want to go down there, they won't find any seats because they're selling out at, <laughs> at Baltimore. And I'm a little sick of hearing about uh, what a palace Camden Yards are. There are plenty of seats where you can't see the field. Okay, so there. Tony, how about the Cubs and Brewers? People like to go up and down I-95 for Summerfest up in the Big Bratwurst. Do you think they'd come? And they already come down to see, see Wrigley. They, the rivalry with the uh, White Sox and Brewers is a real big one, and you know, but there are still uh, a lot of people in Milwaukee who are National League fans, and they remember the rivalry between the Braves and the Cubs. Um, I think in this whole question of realignment that it makes more sense to realign geographically, uh, and if that means coming up with new divisions and putting everybody together and, and aligning teams and geographical um, boundaries that make sense, I think would work. Um, okay. I'd like to see a division with, with the White Sox, the Cubs, Detroit, the Cardinals, uh, Milwaukee, maybe Minnesota, something like that. All right, so we'll throw it all out and start all over again in 1993. Coming up, one of the truly great days in Phillies history, a perfect game and a rookie's first major league win is Phil Sweet, a doubleheader from those nasty old Mets on Father's Day, 1964. If you think Cotman just fixes automatic transmissions, you're only seeing part of the picture. Cotman also fixes standards and clutches, four-wheel drives, Japanese and Korean imports, RVs, front-wheel drives, European imports, older cars, vans, even pickup trucks. And we'll have your car ready when promised at the price we've quoted. Celebrate our anniversary with our 1962 Preventive Maintenance Service Special. Find me in your local white pages. After 30 years, I'm still your Cotman Moon, Cotman Mon, Cotman Men, Cotman... My wife bets me that I can't go into Builder Square Garden Shop and get only what I need. Ha! Pruningers, that's all I need are pruningers. I don't need seeds, fertilizer, hoses, sprinklers. I'm not the least bit interested in these yard tools. Even this weed terminator doesn't phase me. <laughs> Look at these prices. So, I owe the wife a dollar. Builder Square, the warehouse with everything for your house and your garden. Welcome back to Philly's Preview Daily News Extra. We're heading back to Father's Day 1964 now, exactly 28 years to the day for Jim Bunning's perfect game. We get the call from Mets broadcaster Bob Murphy. Jim Bunning is now one strike from a perfect ball game. How do you stay cool and how do you stay poised in a spot like this? The crowd is standing. What I remember most vividly was uh, everyone's the, the writers, the team pouring into the into the clubhouse. Everyone's hooting and hollering. And I was watching the game on TV myself, and just, <laughs> it wasn't even wasn't even thinking about my own game. But then I said, well, "Okay, it's you know it's my turn. Where's the ball? I got to find a baseball. Someone give me a ball. I got to go warm up." 
is another game to be played. The Phillies also won game two of that Father's Day doubleheader as 18-year-old rookie Rick Wise got his first Major League win. Wise and relief pitcher Johnny Klipstein held the Mets to just three hits. And the funny thing is, I think it was into the fourth inning, I had not allowed a base runner. But anyway, I walked the guy. This is the fourth inning. Third or fourth inning. All of a sudden, 55,000 people stand up and are clapping. And I say, what is going on here? That's a base on balls, big deal. First base runner to do it. was the first base runner <laughs> in like 13 <laughs> innings or whatever. And they were going, all right. <laughs> nice going, you got on base. But uh, that's what stands out in my mind. It was, you know, that it was my first major league win and had to come on the heels of a perfect game. I mean, talk about what you're going to do for an encore. But uh, to me, it was just as important. It was just as big a deal as, as, uh, as Bunning's perfect game was. A win was a win. It was my first major. I was only 18 years old, and uh, it, was, uh, it was something. And you were the beat writer back in 1964, Stan. It was something special, huh? Yes, it was. Very <laughs> memorable for Jim Bunning and the Phillies and memorable for me because I got locked in Chase Stadium. Got locked in the ballpark. I took so long to write my story that everybody had left and I had to get a maintenance man to let me out. Was it a memorable story? No, it was an awful story. I just choked. I just absolutely couldn't deal with the perfect game. And I had all second game to write it and kept putting it off. Sat down to write it. Darkness fell. Everybody left. Locked in. That could have been the end of your career. No, no, I'd have climbed out. I'd have made it out of there. You know what I mean? I'd be locked in forever. <laughs> you got back out there again? Got back out right there. Now. It was easier to write. All right, Stan. Regular games. Thank you for the stories and insights to Stan Hockman here in the studio down at the park. Paul Hagan, Tony Janetti from the Chicago Sun Times. I'm Carl Churkin. Thanks for joining us today, everybody, for Philly's preview daily news extra. The matchup for today's game Kyle Abbott for the Phils. Mike Morgan works for the Cubs. The Phillies against the Cubs, live from the vet on the Phillies television network. Phillies Preview Daily News Extra has been brought to you by your Tri-State Honda dealers. Visit your local Tri-State Honda dealer now to get great deals on great wheels. By the Philadelphia Daily News, it's going to surprise a lot of people. And by the folks who invented cool. Carrier, we're the inside guys. My air conditioner, it's out there purring like a kitten. Think solid as a rock. Never think about it. The best time to think about your air conditioning is now. So call your carrier dealer today. We're the guys who know best when it comes to making it better inside. Electric bills getting you down? Install a high-efficiency Carrier Tech 2000 air conditioner and save up to 40% on your utility bill. In Pennsylvania or Delaware, call 215-CARRIER. In New Jersey, 609-CARRIER for your local carrier dealer. Hi, I'm Mickey Morandini of the Phillies. When I make the plays at second base, I depend on my Rawlings glove. It's a choice of the pros. At Gold Medal Sporting Goods, you'll find a great selection of Rawlings gloves, balls, and equipment. Plus, Gold Medal is the official retail outlets of the Phillies. So team up with Rawlings and me at any one of the Gold Medal Sporting Goods stores in the Delaware Valley, where you'll find the best service, selection, and prices around. So, what do you think about the Cardinals this year? They're wonderful, aren't they? If you ask me, the Reds could cause some trouble again. Well, let's hope the Soviets are history. How about those Royals? I doubt Prince Andrew will ever recover. With its in-depth coverage of local and national events, there's a lot to read in the Philadelphia Daily News, even if you don't read it for the sports. Well, what about Billy's chances? It's going to take a heck of a year from Rendell. The Philadelphia Daily News. It's going to surprise a lot of people. WTXF, Fox 29 in Philadelphia. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's time for baseball with the Phillies and the Cubs at Veterans Stadium. Wide to deep left field, it's got a chance! Grand slam home run! That ball 
was stung, stung, stung out of here. Home run, Mike Smith. Today's game with the Phillies and the Cubs is brought to you by the family of Budweiser beer. Reminds you that friends know when to say when. By the Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Page. No other book can match it. Bell of Pennsylvania, a Bell Atlantic company. By your old connection dealers. Come see the power of intelligent engineering in an all new 1992 Oldsmobile. By your friends at 7 Eleven. Proud to be bringing you Phillies baseball. Oh, thank heaven for 7 Eleven. And by your Quality Plus Four dealer, where you can bank on the very best in cars and trucks. Hi, everybody from Veterans Stadium. Welcome to Phillies Baseball. This afternoon, the final game of the series, the Phils and the Chicago Cubs. Kyle Abbott goes for the Phillies. And for the Cubs, it'll be Mike Morgan. Today is Turn Back the Clock Day. We take you back to 1948. Players will wear the uniforms of 48, and most of the Phillies personnel are dressed in 48 garb. I'm Al Capone, along with Bugsy Moran and Lucky Luciano here at Veterans Stadium. And Rich, you had a tremendous year in 48. It had to be memorable for you, your Rookie of the Year honors, and uh, almost won a batting crown. Yeah, I... Uh... Uh, Stan Musial won it that year. Uh, I hit 333, and actually he hit 370-some, so it wasn't that close, but I was second. And I was filthy rich, Harry. I made $5,000 a year, bought a Pontiac for $700, and I think it's interesting that the entire Phillies payroll in 1948 was under $250,000 for the whole team. Wow. And Andy, you must have been a little guy growing up right around the Harrisburg area, huh? Don't remember a whole lot about 48, <laughs> Harry, to be honest with you, but the Phillies prepared some notes on today, and one of the things that really intrigued me was that the Treasury had a surplus that year, if you can imagine that. A loaf of bread cost 14 cents, and a gallon of gas uh, cost 17 cents. We'll never see it again. <laughs> Phillies would like to get some runs for Kyle Abbott this afternoon. Just call back up, and he'll be opposed by Mike Morgan, and we'll have the starting lineups for you on Nostalgia Day right after these messages. <laughs> What does it take to be a mountain man? Let's see. A mountain man must be fearless, sure-footed, willing to answer the call of the wild. But most of all, a mountain man should be thirsty for a smooth bush beer or an easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountains and see if you have what it takes to be a real mountain man. Man. Every day we use it more. <laughs> I ain't sick of that. <laughs> Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. <laughs> Except no imitations. There's only one original. The genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A Bella Atlantic company. Your old connection dealer announces a terrific new way to learn about this year's nine great new Oldsmobiles. A private showing in the privacy of your own home. Just call 1-800-234-OLDS and we'll send you a free videotape that'll give you all the facts, including safety features, engines, electronics, the interior, and much more. That's 1-800-234-OLDS to put the power of intelligent shopping to work for you. Then go see the special summer cashback financing and lease offers now available. Hey! <laughs> 
Phillies baseball. It's more than a game. It's the rollicking, frolicking Philly fanatic. Nail-biting ninth innings. Tough as nails, Dykstra. Out of here, homers, feet your face, jump out of your seat, and memories are made of this. Phillies baseball. It's fun for the whole family. We've got two fantastic fireworks spectaculars. First, Wednesday, July 1st, after the 635 Expos game, and second, Friday, July 17th, after the 735 Dodgers game. Compliments of four states and star 104.5. rendition of our national anthem by Unity from Lancaster, directed by Gary Davis. Well, Nostalgia Day takes us back to 1948, and let's check the starting lineups for this afternoon's game, brought to you by 7-Eleven for the Chicago Cubs, managed by Jim Lefevre. Jose Vizcaino will play third base today and lead off. Doug Desenzo in center field bat second. Ryan Sandberg, second baseman, hitting third. Andre Dawson, the right fielder, bats fourth. Mark Gray's first base hitting fifth. Luis Salazar in left field will bat sixth. Joe Girardi catching, hitting seventh. Ray Sanchez at shortstop will bat eighth. And batting ninth and pitching will be Mike Morgan. For the Phillies of Jim Fregosi, it'll be Lenny Dykstra, center fielder, leading off. Ruben Amaro, right fielder, bat second. Dave Hollins, third baseman, hitting third. Ricky Jordan, first base, will bat fourth. Mariano Duncan at shortstop, hits fifth. West Chamberlain, left fielder, batting sixth. Steve Lake will catch. Darren Dalton being given the day off. Lake hitting seventh. Mickey Morandini, second baseman, bats eighth. And batting ninth and pitching will be Kyle Abbott. Umpires this afternoon, Jerry Crawford, the crew chief, will work the balls and the strikes. Larry Poncino at first base. Ron Barnes at second. And Charlie Williams will umpire at third. Kyle Abbott 0 and 7 when he opened the season for the Phillies a 5-4-4 ERA. Then he went down to Scran Wilkesbury and pitched very well. He was 4 and 1 with a 1-5-4 earned run mark for the Red Barons. Average just about a strikeout per inning pitched. Phillies just never seemed to score for him when he pitched for the Phillies at the beginning of the season. Phillies averaged just two runs per game for him. And that's from the second highest scoring team in the National League. Only a run behind Pittsburgh coming into play today, having scored 291 runs. Jose Vizcaino will lead it off. Takes one wide for a ball, one and nothing. Todd Doyle of Cedar Barrett Island, New York, celebrating his 84th birthday today. One ball and one strike to Vizcaino. He is a switch hitter. Hitting 199 overall, batting a little better right than left. Good breaking ball, a ball and two strikes. Helen Humphreys of Jenkintown, 90 today. And on the other edge of the scale is Charlie Rowan Jr., son of the banjo man. Charlie Rowan Sr. of Quaker City String Band. Charlie Rowan, who Jr. works in the press club here, celebrating his 20th. Two balls and two strikes. Katie Law back in Mifflinville, a birthday today, and Amy Cook in Levittown, also celebrating on a beautiful June 21st. Line drive, he hung a breaking ball. That's going all the way back to the fence. This guy, you know, will get two on it. His stand-up double for this guy, you know. That'll 
will bring on Doug Dispenzo. Yeah, you're right, Harry. He, this guy, I know, chased a ball down in the dirt his previous swing. And then he laid one right up there, high in the strike zone. Bad pitch. Sometimes you get away with bad pitches, but he didn't on that one. Doug Dispenzo, also a switch hitter, hitting at 267. Just missing for a ball. Send along our best wishes for a speedy recovery to season ticket holder Michael Skozin. Michael, hope you're feeling better real soon. And also to Ed Myers of Philadelphia, recuperating from a heart attack. Bounce to third base. Hollins checks the runner, throws across in time to get to Senzo. That's one down, and that'll bring on Ryan Sandberg. Steve Book in Norristown reached the half-century mark today. Betty Moyer of Roundtown, Pennsylvania, near York, celebrating a birthday. 28th anniversary wishes to Dom and Rita Rossi. Sandberg batting at 295, hit his 10th home run here last night. The only run given up by Terry Mulholland. Mulholland in that game suffered a non-displaced fracture of the little finger in his right hand. And the word now is that he will miss a start but not be disabled. He rolls a no strike. Bonnie and David Klein, an anniversary today, and Mary and Mike Braxis, their 52nd anniversary. Two and one. I really like those 48 uniforms the Phillies are wearing, Whitey. They're beautiful. Beautiful uniform, that's red, white, and blue. in 48 you had on your first major league uniform yeah didn't okay. settle for anything <laughs> foul back and out of play two and two to sandberg these uniforms look better there's there's an old 48 scene you see uh, eddie sawyer i'm on the left and granny hander is on his right they fit these fellas a lot better i don't know they give them a better fit <laughs> we used to wear those uniforms and they were baggy <laughs> He rolls in two strikes to Sandberg. Full count. Frank Muskie Massarelli. 83 today. Wilmington, Delaware. Him and the Cubs have two men on base. Abbott in 50 innings, 38 strikeouts, and 22 walks. Had a good year last year at Edmonton, voted the best pitching prospect in the Coast League, and had a tremendous strikeout walk ratio, but has issued too many walks thus far. They wishes to Uncle Jack Kelly from the great Kelly Bell. Might be a double play. And is around the horn to retire the side. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left after one half. Dubs nothing, Phil's coming to bat. Game time is no time 
for distraction. Which is why we created the 7-Eleven Sports Stop. So you can get everything you need for the big game in one trip. Like a major league selection of soft drinks from coolers maintained at 35 degrees cold. And every kind of snack food imaginable. Sure, other stores offer convenience, but 7-Eleven has everything a sports fan needs. Everything. For the sports stop makes a difference. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. There's one thing about hard work and play. The harder you push, the more you learn. Some trucks just don't cut it. Today, you need muscle. Like Ford's powerhouse of value, the new 92 F-Series pickup. This number one truck has better payload in towing for work and bold new styling that's great when you play. Saving up to $2,500 means you can bag on the big board. The all-new F-150 at your Quality Plus Ford deal. Where big trucks mean real value. I have a partner. He calls me as much as I call him. We send data back and forth between our two sites. I live in Maryland, and he lives in Pennsylvania. Then Friends of the Firm came along. Introducing Friends of the Firm, the 20% extra savings of friends and family for small business. And I saw that as an immediate opportunity to increase our profitability and to save on my largest portion of my phone bill. We signed each other up immediately. So we're both saving the money. It would just seem stupid to not want to save it. No lines longer than your flight. No. I can't seem to find your reservation. No incomprehensible contract. No heater stuck on high in August. No hidden charges. And no lemons. National. No problem. The telecast is presented by authority of the Phillies and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Phillies and WTXF Box 29 in Philadelphia. Phillies facing Mike Morgan today. He's five up and two down, an ERA of 3.29. He started slowly, then won all five of his games in the month of May when he was National League Pitcher of the Month. 32-year-old sign as a free agent coming off a good year with the Dodgers. Made the all-star team last year for the first time in his career. He was 14-10 and 10 and a 2.78 earned run mark. What was that? Did you see that wind-up? I wonder if he did that in honor of Nostalgia Day. <laughs> Look at this wind-up on the first pitch to Lenny Dykstra. And dude got a kick out of it, too. I'm kind of wasted a pitch there, though, I believe. <laughs> he... Mike Morgan must really be in the spirit of this thing. <laughs> now he goes back to the conventional style. Just missing for a ball, two and nothing. Two balls and no strikes. Sykes for hitting a 284. Lenny, a nine-game hitting streak going for him. Right there for a strike. It's two and one. One of Morgan's two losses came to the Phillies here at Veterans Stadium. Lost to Danny Cox, 7-1. to one. Lifetime, it was the only loss he's had to the Phillies. He won three while pitching for the Dodgers against the Phillies last year. I think he pitches a lot like Tim Belcher. Same pitches, same style. I don't think he throws as hard as Belcher. That was a good curveball. Three balls and two strikes. Leonard Shearer in Williamsport, PA, 95 today. And our good buddy from Wilmington, Delaware, and Dan's Island, Florida, Al Cartwright. Bouncing ball to first base. Ooh. It's a bad hop at Grace can really feel the position and Dice is out. Mark Grace. Yeah, this really took a bad hop. Must have hit the cutout, and like he was ready for it. He's very quick. Great hands. Morgan beat everybody to the bag there. A lot of, a lot of good first basemen in this league. Mark Grace is one of them. Will of Thrill can play defense with the best of them. He hit a clod or something there because it really took a high hop. The guy in San Diego isn't too bad either. 
Base hit for Ruben Amaro. So Ruben is a one-out base runner. Yeah, Fred McGriff, and of course, Strucker takes the back seat to nobody. Yeah. And Andres Galarraga, an excellent defensive glove at first. The team we're finally going to see tomorrow, Montreal, started the season with Tim Wallach at first, and they have moved him back to third where he wanted to be anyhow. He went over to first base reluctantly, and actually that, that move, which Tom Reynolds, then manager of Montreal, insisted on, might have cost him his job. Well, Wallach was unhappy, and Wallach is not a troublemaker by mm -hmm. any means, but he, he was not happy playing first, and Felipe Alou got him back to third. Felipe had a great line. He said, he, Wallach's my best third baseman, also my best first baseman, but he can't get over there fast enough <laughs> to get, catch his own throws. <laughs> Dave Holland's batting at 266. He has been a good lifetime hitter against Morgan. His average 417 lifetime against Morgan with one home run. Talking about Al Cartwright's birthday, hard to believe Al is 75 not hard to believe. I thought he was about 85. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, Al. <laughs> Had a cut, fouled it straight back. It's two and one. Boy, oh, what a crowd today. It's close to capacity here today. This is, a, this is really a great promotion. And people seem to relate to it. It's just a good day at the ballpark. Yeah. There goes Amaro. Pitch is low, and he is out at second base. Ruben thrown out with a good, strong throw from Girardi to Sanchez. Fair jump. Boy, this was a close play. He had him, I believe. Yep. Good tag by this guy, you know. No, that's Sanchez. Or Sanchez playing today, sorry. Just got the tag down there in a hurry. Three balls and one strike to Holland. Ooh. Must have caught the outside corner. It looked a little wide. And Holland thought it was wide. And it, and it, it was. Yeah, it, <laughs> six inches outside. Whole count holds to Holland. Happy Father's Day, Whitey. You too. Thank you. And to all you dads watching on this beautiful 21st of June. Because of that 3-1 call, Holland now is, is chasing pitches out of the strike zone. Chase the, yeah, chase the 3-2 pitch was pretty much in the same spot as the 3-1. Last pitch was probably a little high. He draws the walk. So Holland is a two-out base runner for Ricky Jordan. Jordan hitting at 275. Well, he's a go from here to Montreal and then Chicago back home a week from Monday. And when we get back home a week from Monday, something is certainly going to be missing. The old ball yard here at Veterans Stadium. Two city police officers, Bob Savino and Duke Mathis, who handled VIP parking here from the time Veterans Stadium opened are retiring. This will be their last day. And they will be sorely missed. Great guys. <laughs> one ball and one strike. You have to be a kind of a diplomat to do what they did out there with that parking. <laughs> you know, people come in and complain about this and that, and they handled it very well. They both seem like they're too young to retire. Top foul coming back and out of play. We wish Duke and Bob well in whatever their pursuits. Yeah. 
One and two the count to Ricky Jordan. Called out on the strikes, and that will retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of one, nothing, nothing game. a play here at Veterans Stadium, the Cubs nothing and the Phillies nothing. If that returning class hero on tonight's episode of Parker Lewis Can't Lose looks familiar, it's because he's night court Terry Anderson, guest starring on a special hour of Parker Lewis tonight at 7 on Fox 29. Mark Grace leads off for the Cubs here in the second. Grace hitting 316 among the league leaders in hitting. He has a 12-game hitting streak alive. He's been hot. 422 is average in the last 12 games. One ball and one strike. Cubs go from here to New York. Their first meeting with the Mets. Those are great old Cub uniforms too. I remember those, those especially those socks. Breaking ball hit on the ground to Ricky Jordan. It's a fair ball, and Jordan makes the play himself. One down, that'll bring on Luis Salazar. Salazar hitting at 194. And thanks to Peggy Fleming for the Toll House cookie set up. Peggy from Old Bridge, New Jersey. Supposed to be at the park today, but Peggy's under the weather. And her husband, Chubb, and son are here. Oh. Not the ice skater, is it? No. She's the cookie maker. No balls and two strikes as Salazar committed. Ooh, more on the top of his head. Salazar has only one home run, kind of unusual. He's playing quite a bit. He hit 14 last year. Two balls and two strikes. Foul back and out of play. Let's pause for station identification on the Phil's television network. WTSF, Fox 29 in Philadelphia. He rolls in two strikes to Luis Salazar. Now oh, that one out of play. Still two and two. The 
practicing with a change up of Cole Cow. Wow. Talk about going after a bad pitch. That was eyeball high. <laughs> Up there around the, the cap of his, or the bill of his cap. Look at that. Look how high that is. <laughs> Probably also outside. The amazing thing about that is he swung over the ball. He was so <laughs> high and he still swung over it. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to Joe Girardi. Billy's Baseball is brought to you in part by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats the bud. And by the Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. Bella Pennsylvania, Bella Lally Company. And by Dodge, dare to compare at your local Dodge dealer today. Locked it in the air to shallow right. Rubin Amaro down with the sunglasses. Squeezes it, and that will retire the side. No runs hit there. There's none left. We go to the bottom of the second. It's nothing, nothing. Come to Dodgers. Thursday, July 16th, 1235, Business Person Special. Friday, July 17th, Fireworks. Saturday, July 18th, and Sunday, July 19th, 135, when it's free sunglasses. Second, no runs, one hit, no errors. A peace travel arranged through U.S. Air. Introducing the only daily non-stop service from Philadelphia to Chicago O'Hare. U.S. Air to Chicago, because everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. Mariano Duncan leads off for the Phils. One ball and no strikes to him. Mariano hitting 284. Hits that ball well to center, but Desenzo makes the catch. One down, that'll bring on West Chamberlain. Our trivia question this afternoon brought to you by 7-Eleven. Can you name the three second basemen who have won the MVP award since 1950? Here's West Chamberlain hitting a 208. West was hitting 331 at Scran Wilkesbury. Four being called back up. Turning back the clock to 1948. Average family income in 48. $2,926. That's why that. $5,000 minimum salary we made in 1948 was a lot of money. <laughs> Doing nothing. Two and one. Those prices for tires, 14 cents for a loaf of bread. 
by a Palm Beach speed for 26.75. Palm Beach suit was a nice suit. We used to uh, get those in Cincinnati. They had a place out there. To buy a Botany 500 suit for 50 bucks in 48. Those are the concession prices at Shy Park in 48. cents for a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. Just to be able to go into a grocery store and for a buck, you can hardly carry out what you could buy. Hard to believe. Carry it in the palm of your hand today. Hits it hard, but at Biscaino. Chamberlain retired, two outs. It'll bring up Steve Lake. Laker hitting a 343. Cub pitching staff as a whole does not surrender many home runs. Morgan is like that. He's given up just four this year. One of the homers he gave up to Dale Murphy. Dalton being given the day off. Dalton leads the National League and runs batted in. In the air to shallow center, Desenzo comes on. Philly's down in the turn in the second. No runs hit there, is and none left. We go to the third, it's nothing, nothing. Jiffy Lou. Not just by being the biggest, but by being the best. 50,000 cars a day get our complete 14-point service. And by giving your best the world-class protection of Pennzoil. By doing more than people expect of you. Free fluid refills between services. And by always being there. At Jiffy Lou, we do your car a great service. Preferred over oil to the Honda Accord in a recent survey comparing things like comfort, convenience, and performance. And now, a thousand cash back or zero percent APR makes Spirit an even more obvious choice over the Honda Accord during the Dodge Dare to Compare Challenge. See your Dodge dealer today and compare. After two innings of play here at Veterans Stadium, the Phil's nothing and the Cubs nothing. When six young men and women share one beach house for the long, hot summer, anything can happen, and does, on the sizzling new Fox comedy, Down the Shore, premiering tonight at 9.30 on Fox 29. Ray Sanchez will lead off the shortstop. Turn back the clock to 1948. Lots of fun here at the ballpark. There's a dude. Yeah, this is just a recent promotion. Any reason why the vice president in charge of finance has come in here with a financial statement for us? <laughs> Do we owe money, Mikey, or what? <laughs> Line drive and Sanchez is the leadoff base runner. I presume that's the 1948. It is the fiscal statement. Did you make any money that year, Jerry? Jerry probably wasn't even born yet. How old were you, Jerry? 
two gone on three. Two years of age, Jerry Clothier. Morgan trying to bump the runner along. Players' contracts, Harry. 249,817. That's for the whole team, I presume. Well, you have 25 players. They made them almost 10,000 a year. That's not bad for 48. Gets the bunt down nicely in the lake. Throws him out. Sacrifice good by Morgan. It goes late to Morandini, moving Sanchez the second. Brings on the top of the order, Jose Viscaino. 249,817, the entire payroll in 48. That could get you probably a number 11 pitcher. For that. <laughs> <laughs> this might not be the right time, Jerry, but the Phillies owe me seven hundred and some dollars from 1940. Five in the minor league. <laughs> Boy, think of what that's worth yeah, now with the interest. With interest? <laughs> <laughs> they uh, did not pay my uh, expenses train ride from Utica, New York to Omaha, Nebraska and back. <laughs> <laughs> 101 to Vizcaino. Our 7 Eleven trivia question of the afternoon Who are the three second basemen who have won the MVP award since 1950? The one's easy. <laughs> yeah. Sandberg. Yeah. Talking about National League? Both leagues. Pops him up. Mickey Morandini will flag it. And that's two down, and it'll bring on Doug DeSenzo, who grounded out his first time up. Billy's Baseball is brought to you in part by your Quality Plus Ford dealer, where you can bank on the very best in cars and trucks. And by U.S. Healthcare, the health plan for living. Runner at second base is Sanchez with two outs. Ball and no strike. How about that Bobby Doerr? No. Nope. Hall of Famer. That's in 50. <laughs> one of them once played for the Phils. On the 83 World Series team. Davey Johnson? No. Not Manny Trio? No. Joe Morgan? The P, the P, the sweet P. He won. He rolls in a strike to Desenzo. Three balls and one strike. The other MVP award winner, second baseman, the late Melly Fox. That's right. Chicago White Sox. Melly in the Hall of Fame? He is not, and a lot of folks think he should be, and I'm, I'm one of them. Great little ball player, offensively mm. and defensively. First owned by the old Philadelphia Athletics. Pops him up. Mickey Morandini waits. That'll retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom of the third. Nothing, nothing.
There's so much to stay healthy for. Life's a ball. If only you know it. And it's all just waiting for you. You're alive. So come on and show it. There's such a lot of living to do. That's just a place, place to go, people to see. Everything for you and me. And that's why I'm ready for taking. And that Cadillac. All shiny and new Got on boom The time is the way Over one million Americans have turned to us for a healthier way of life. U.S. Healthcare, a health plan for living. dealers making deals on Scoop, America's most fun car. We're dealing on Excel, too, America's most affordable car. All Hyundais have two years no-cost maintenance plus a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. Hurry, this deal ends July 6th. Come on down to your nearest Hyundai dealer for great deals on great cars. Well, fireworks displays, always big nights here at Veterans Stadium. We have two shows this year, Wednesday, July 1st, right after the game with Montreal, game time 7.35, and Friday, July 17th, after the game with the Dodgers at 7.35. Always spectacular aerial fireworks display set to music. Compliments, of course, states and star 104.5. For tickets, call 463-1000. Fireworks dates again July 1st and July 17th. The first against Montreal, the 17th against the Dodgers. Mickey Morandini leads it off. Mickey hitting a 263. That had good success against Morgan, two for 17 lifetime. One ball and two strikes. Morgan was not a winning pitcher until he came to the National League. 14 and 10 last year with the Dodgers. Lifetime in the Major League, he's 72 and 106. Hard to believe when you see the way he throws, the yeah. pitches he has and the control he has. Just fouled on the first base side. Still two and two. Balls and two strikes to Mickey Morandini. Another foul ball. Throwing was three one slider, three two slider. Morandini hit them both hard. Today, cap day for all men, 15 and over. Compliments to Texaco. Full count. I guess that was a 2-1 slider, not a 3-1 slider. Chased a high pitch and lost it into shallow left field. Where Salazar shakily makes the grab. It was the Phillies lineup in 19 and 48. His whiteness leading off. The hat batting second. Sistler third. Bert Haas from Naperville, Illinois, hitting fourth. And Del Ennis, Eddie Miller, Granny Hamner. Now Lakeman in the pitcher that day was Ken Heinzelman. Surprise to me in that lineup is that Ennis wasn't hitting fourth. And Hamner was hitting seventh. Granny, uh, as I recall, was hit second most of the time. You had a bad game that day. You just went two for five. 
raising your average to 344. There's Del Ennis and Brian hey. Liz. Abbott bounces it to deep shortstop. Sanchez throws him out. Two down. You had just come off a doubleheader the day before in which you were 7 for 10. Billy's lost that day by a score of 4 to 3. You know, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was a 4 3 game. That Howie Fox beat you. Cincinnati, I guess. Yep. Sauer hit a home run. When did Sauer go over to the Cubs? Uh, he was with Chicago quite a while later in his career. Cubs had Hank Sauer, Ralph Kiner, and Frankie Baumholtz was a center fielder who played between those two guys. <laughs> I'll tell you. By July 4th, Baumholz had lost about 40 pounds just running <laughs> balls down. Hank, oh, no, Ralph, either one, were great outfielders, at least at that time when Ralph Kiner came to the major leagues. He was a pretty good outfielder, and he had some speed, but later on he lost that. In the center, shallow, Desenzo, did he trap it? No, he caught it. Good play by Doug Desenzo, taking a hit away from Lenny Dykstra. No runs hit there, and none left. Andy Musser comes your way in the fourth. After three, it's nothing, nothing. Where to find the mountain man? A mountain man can often be found on the trail of adventure in search of remote watering holes or weathering harsh climate. Most often, however, you'll find the mountain man wherever you find smooth bush beer or easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountain and find yourself in the wide open world of the mountain man. Each year, J.D. Power and Associates surveys consumers for the line of cars with the highest initial quality. This year, the car line that outranked Lexus and all the Europeans was a luxury car line from Infinity. Infinity engineers said from the very beginning, build a better car and the people will come. cloud is so revolutionary, we've brought in a leading economist to tell you about it. Actually, Candace, anybody familiar with the sigmoidal logistic response function can attest to the elemental nature of cloud. He says it's simple. Cloud coalesces the telecom expenditures of multiple small enterprises, thus achieving unheard of economies of scale. In other words, you save more than 20%. Any questions? Just one, Glenn. Why don't you get a light? <laughs> Turn for only three games on June 29th. They're against the Montreal Expos Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The Wednesday night game is a 6.35 start, and that's the fireworks night, the first fireworks on July 1st. The other two games start at their normal time at 7.35. Wednesday night is 6.35. And Andy Musher with us here in the fourth. Andy? Okay, Whitey, thank you. This is Ryan Sandberg, who walked his first time up there. Two balls and no strikes on Rhino. Hit a home run here last night. Sandberg to be followed by Dawson and Grace. So this has the potential to be a tough inning for Kyle Abbott. He's got to face the three toughest hitters in their lineup. And it's kind of a strange game for him. He hasn't given up a run. He's made some great pitches, but he's also made some bad ones. 
Here's one to center field. Dykstra puts the glasses down, holds off Amaro, and makes the catch. He battled it, though. That must really be tough out there because we saw Morandini really fight it. We saw Salazar fight it and left. And Dykstra is battling it there, as you can see. Andre Dawson grounded into a 5-4-3 double play first time up, and that really got the Phillies out of a first-inning jam. Ouch. Hawk has a bum knee anyway. That had to hurt. Right on the arch of his foot there, that one thing he doesn't need is another bruise on his leg. Kind of surprised that he's been in the starting lineup for all four of these games on AstroTurf. They usually give him a day off here. Quickly, nothing and two on the Hawks. Not been hitting a whole lot lately, lately just one hit in his last 15 at-bats. Dawson gets a single. That's the third Chicago hit. So Hawk at first with one out. Mark Grace will be the batter now. Grace has yet to continue his hitting streak. He brings a 12-gamer in. He's 0 for 1, having grounded out to first. has a real good eye. He walks a lot. Has uh, been walked 40 times this year to rank in the National League top 10. Was a time that Andre Dawson was a base stealer before all those bad knees. Grace got jammed and fouls it back. One ball, one strike. Dawson took off there. He, he didn't have much of a jump. I guess they were playing hit and run because Grace chased a bad pitch. Trying to protect the runner. by Duncan and the Phillies get a double play Cubs hitting into their second double play of the afternoon no runs one hit nobody left nothing nothing at 7-11 we look at soda differently take Bill Durflinger and Edmund Ed we don't mind them doing a little reading on the job because it takes guys like Ed and Bill in the red shoes to make sure our coolers are always maintained at 35 degrees. It's a little thing, but it makes a big difference for those who want their soda fast and cold. So if you open a cooler and see a couple of attractive guys like these, please don't whistle. It could throw them off. For 35 degrees makes a difference. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Thousand in cash. Every Thursday night, buy this is a big cash easy. 
Your Old Connection dealer announces a terrific new way to learn about this year's nine great new Oldsmobiles. A private showing in the privacy of your own home. Just call 1-800-234-OLD and we'll send you a free videotape that'll give you all the facts, including safety features, engines, electronics, the interior, and much more. That's 1-800-234-OLD to put the power of intelligent shopping to work for you. Then go see the special summer cashback financing and lease offers now available. After three and a half innings of play here at the Vet, Phillies nothing, Cubs nothing. Imagine Al Bundy's surprise when he turns on the TV and sees his daughter. It's true, Kelly does Hollywood on a special two-part episode of Married with Children tonight at 9.30 and 11 on Fox 29. Bottom of the fourth at Veteran Stadium, and that double play has been a friend of Kyle Abbott's today. Yes, sir. Uh, got uh, Grace to hit into one and Dawson to hit into one. Two pretty good hitters. Ruben Amaro has the only Phillies hit in the game. He went through on that one for a strike. Ruben singled to right field his first time up. Later, he was thrown out trying to steal by Joe Girardi. Happy birthday to Bill Russell in Marlton, New Jersey. Bill, a Phillies fan. Infield bouncer. Played by Sandberg, the underhand crossover, and Amaro is out. Sandberg has not made a throwing error since the 4th of July two years ago. I mean, it'll be two years on this 4th of July since the man last made a throwing error. Truly incredible. He doesn't make many of any kind, really. No. When's that gold glove? What is he, eight, nine years in a row now? I think it's nine. He has committed three errors this year. Nine straight gold gloves for him. Dave Holland takes a strike. He drew a walk. The only batter walked by Mike Morgan today. Holland's up among the league leaders in both walks and runs. You see a shot of him from behind. There it is. Rich Ashburn led the NL with 32 steals the last time a Philly led the league. Yeah, that was a lot then. You know, they had a little different approach to steals at that time. I will say one thing about those 32 steals. Every one of them meant something. I, saw, I think the best base runner I've ever seen was Jackie Robinson with the Dodgers, and he led the league a couple of times with steals in the 30 range. Another walk for Holland, his second. So on this day, June 21st, back in 48, Take a look at some of the other league leaders. Ed Williams hitting 4-11 on this date. Wow. Kenny Keltner, 16 home runs. And 59 RBIs for the Thumper and DiMaggio. Wow. Now the hitter is Ricky Jordan. Collins has stolen... Six bases in ten tries. Jordan was called out on strikes to end the first inning. Usual won the batting title in 48. That was strike. second with, and he must have been a, at least 40 points ahead of me. You know, it was a bad second. Everybody else was, nobody was close to him. He won seven batting titles. A week ago today, we saw Stan the Man in uh, St. Louis when the Cardinals had... It wasn't their turn back the clock day, but it was an old-timers game. Stan did not dress in uniform and did not go to the plate until the very end of the promotion. Then he went up there, got in the box, and swung the bat a couple of times. He looked great. He had that style that was his and nobody else's. 
There goes Holland. Ball bounced up the middle. Out at second. Out at first. No runs, no hits, nobody left. Through four, nothing, nothing. official souvenir and gift catalog is available and features an extensive line of clothing, novelty items, gifts, and videos, all with the Phillies' new logo and colors. Just call the Phillies at 463-1000 and ask for a Phillies souvenir and gift catalog. Operator standing by today till 4 o'clock to take your call. We're still scoreless here at Veteran Stadium as Luis Salazar bats. And Whitey, how about that pitch that he struck out on the last time he was up there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know he's a free swinger, but that is really taking it to the nth degree. He was on a 3-2 count, and I think, you know, he's thinking, boy, I'm going to really get something close to the strike zone here and unload on it. Well, he just couldn't stop his swing. For those of you who weren't watching, it was literally over his head. And the replay showed he was standing on his tippy toes by the time he finished the swing. He is a tough guy to walk. Now the count is three and one. It was amazing to see him stand up there and take the first three pitches. Now it's count is full. And that's the pitch. This one was not up as high as the last one. He does get hits off that high pitch as witnessed that one. That was a high one though. High in the strike zone wasn't a strike. It was a ball. It was up there around these letters. He's up to speed on that, too. That's, that's his pitch right there. Girardi, 0 for 1, a fly ball to right. That was hit number 4 for the Cubs. They've had three more hits than the Phillies. It's a nothing nothing game. figured it out this morning. Nearly one in five remaining Phillies games will be played against Montreal. 19% of the remaining Phillies games will be against the Expos. Phillies plan tomorrow night. They haven't seen him yet. Sinking in center. Dykstra. Uh-oh. It bounces away. And here goes Salazar to third. The Cubs have first and third. Nobody out. Girardi will get a single. I think Glenny will probably get an error because Salazar had stopped the second. It wasn't an easy play for Dax because he kind of got caught in between here on this faster turf. And there's Salazar approaching second when he saw the ball bounce away. He went on to third. Lenny does get an error. That Girardi is a tough out for the Phillies. Now Ray Sanchez is at the plate. Line drive to right field, and that's going to be in for extra bases. Salazar scores. Girardi is coming around. 
Here goes Sanchez to third with a triple at two nothing Chicago. Sanchez was hitting 125 at the start of this game. He's two for two. Single and a triple. And all this damage being done by the bottom of the order. Believe it or not, Sanchez has only five hits, but that's his third triple. Slice that ball and right inside the chalk line. So all of a sudden, Kyle Abbott is in some trouble. Johnny Padres for a visit to the mound. Bobby Arolf up in the Phillies bullpen. The triple by Sanchez nullifies the impact of the error on Dykstra as the runners would have scored in any event. <laughs> Phillies baseball brought to you in part by Amco Transmissions, the world's largest chain of transmission specialists. And by Builder Square, the warehouse with everything for your house. Mike Morgan with the infield in. Ball one on Morgan. He sacrificed his first time up. Pittsburgh takes a 2-0 lead over Montreal on a two-run home run by Orlando Merced. Howard Johnson had to leave that Mets game today. Left after two innings of play. Had muscle spasms in his neck. In the right field. Out of play. No outs in the fifth inning. The Cubs have started single, single, triple. And they lead 2 nothing, And they're in a heck of a spot to get a third run. back to catch the line drive. Sanchez tags and scores at 3-0 Chicago as Morgan picks up his third RBI of the year. He did a good job. Now Abbott getting hit here for a reason. High pitch to Salazar where he likes it. A high pitch to Girardi. He singled the center. And after being ahead of uh, Mike Morgan here, threw him a high pitch he could drive to the outfield. This Caino has doubled and popped up. He's one for two. He takes ball one. Three nothing Chicago in the fifth. Pop up back of the infield. Morandini in pursuit. And that's the second out. Now Abbott will have to work on Doug Descendo. He's gotten him twice on a ground ball to third and on a pop-up to Morandini. Descendo, the emergency pitcher for the Cubs. Last year they sent him out to pitch and uh, he pitched four innings last year, he did, and did not give up a run. Dykstra giving chase. Makes the play. Cubs get three runs in the fifth. They do so three hits, one error. Nobody left. We go to the bottom half of the inning. Three-nothing Chicago. Compared to the Honda Accord, the competition is still a bit behind the times. They can't compete in popularity. They can't compete in reliability. And now that you can lease an Accord LX sedan for just $199 a month, we doubt they can compete in price. Or look, for that matter. The Great Wheels Great Deals lease right now at your Tri-State Honda dealer. Where can you get Dunlop tires at the best price? A Dunlop Secret 7 dealer. Plus free computer balancing, 
and free road hazard coverage on most models? Only at a Dunlop Super 7 dealer. Who'll even rotate your tires free every 7,000 miles and give you free defective tire replacement on most models? You guessed it. Only these Dunlop Super 7 dealers give you all those free extras. Check their ads in your Sunday paper. Believe it or not, you can get a Pizza Hut pizza free. Just purchase any large Pizza Hut specialty pizza at regular price and get a medium pepperoni pizza free. It's our unbelievable pepperoni pizza deal. Have any large specialty pizza delivered, including our new and improved pepperoni lovers or meat lovers pizzas with 25% more meat toppings and get a medium pepperoni pizza free. Sound unbelievable? Call Pizza Hut Delivery now for your free medium pepperoni pizza because eating is believing. Big League stars, big league action, and a special big league free gift. Have we got a game coming up for you? Philly baseball, great fun, great value. All children 14 and under receive really sharp-looking sunglasses absolutely free. Compliments of Tasty Cake when the Phillies play Darrell and the Dodgers, Sunday, July 19th at 1.35. Reserve your tickets in advance. Call 463-1000 now. And we're back here at the vet. This is Duncan at the plate, grounding a ball foul. Take a look at the scoring in this game. The Cubs just got three. Ray Sanchez triple in both Salazar and Girardi, who had gotten on on singles, and then Mike Morgan sacrificed fly, brought in Sanchez for the third run. And that's the way we stand right now. Count on Duncan, no balls and two strikes. Mariano's had one at bat today. He lined out the center field. Mike Morgan is throwing a one-hit shutout to this point. Almaro has the one hit. He's walked two, struck out one. Usually on Sunday day games, Duncan really has a time of it he's he's batting 443 in day games and it seems like of course most of them were on sunday anyway but he's really been a sunday hitter this year the count has fallen mariano morgan shaking his head he's missed badly on three pitches after getting two quick strikes all four duncan aboard to start the phillies fifth inning walk number three issued by morgan Mariano doesn't get many walks either. Uh, he is Mariano. I think had three walks going into this ball game. That would be number four. And he laid off a tough pitch to three two sliders and just missed the outside corner. Chamberlain 0 for 1, ground ball to third. We just got word that Jimmy Leland was ejected from that game against the Expos by third base umpire Joe West. Duncan has stolen nine bases in ten tries. That is Duncan's fifth walk, 94th. Still not, not very many. Cubs infield has turned one double play today. The Phillies infield has turned it twice. Cameron's got the high top. A lot of stocking showing. Ground ball is short. That should be a double. Double play. 4-3, and the Cubs turn it. Double play number two for Chicago. Billy's baseball brought to you in part by your old connection dealers. Come see the power of intelligent engineering in an all-new 1992 Oldsmobile. Here's Steve Lake getting a rare start against a right-handed pitcher today. Lake has had one at bat. He flied out to center. And hammers it down the left field side. Fair ball to the corner. 
Laker carrying into second. He'll have a stand-up double. Second hit of the game for the Phillies, their first extra base hit. He smoked a high pitch also. He kind of tomahawked this high inside pitch. Just fair. Well, that double play ball was a big one. Mickey Morandini, he's had one at bat today, a fly ball to left field. Jeff Grotewald has moved into the on-deck circle to bat for Abbott. Phillies trail 3-0. He's a left-handed batter. He rolled up in the bullpen. 3 nothing Cubs. John Truck available for pinch hitting duty. And John hoping to get back in the everyday lineup. But a groin injury has him benched right now. Truck and the uh, ball club don't quite agree when he's coming back. Truck says he wants to play tomorrow, and the ball club is thinking more like two, two and a half weeks. One thing about the disabled list, uh, you don't hurt yourself by waiting as far as putting a player on it uh, because you can backdate it as long as the player isn't used. The only thing is that you go shorthanded in the meantime. Here's a ball hit right to Sandberg. He makes the play. Out goes Morandini, and down go the Phillies. No runs, one hit, and one left. Five innings, three nothing tough. Let's take a look at the pitcher's numbers right now. Kyle Abbott, of course, faring more poorly. He's given up six hits. He has actually walked fewer than Morgan. They each have only a single strikeout. And Kyle pitching his final inning here because he's due to be the first batter in the bottom half of the sixth. They had a pinch hitter out for him in the fifth, so chances are they'll bat for him here. And uh, 1948 style dancing, Whitey. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember anybody around like that in 1948. What, that guy there? I saw yeah, that guy. guy. <laughs> How did she get stuck with him? Well, I want to know. <laughs> All right, it's the sixth inning. 
Sandberg has walked and slide to center. 3 nothing Cubs. Ouch. Gary Crawford. Havertown, PA, working the plate today and doing his usual fine job. Son of former National League umpire Shag Crawford, also in Havertown. Major League pop-up for Hollins and foul ground. Sandberg is out. What I want to know is Jerry Crawford using the 1948 strike zone today? <laughs> No, he's using the same one, and it's a pretty good one. It's about what it should be. How was the strike zone different in 48? A little bigger. It was a little higher than it is now. The, the strike zone was supposed to be what they called under the letters, and that's generally what it was then. A quick reading of the current rule book will show that it still says that. Well, it, it's not. Dawson has ground into a double play and singled. So somewhere along the line, it was refined, but without having gone into the... Uh, it went lower. Uh, I think they call sometimes pitches with strikes that are a little too low, but it's gone down. Dawson... Sends it to Denny, Lenny Dykstra territory, and Lenny puts those glasses down and comes on him and makes the catch. Two out here in the sixth inning, and we've got a high sky today and a problem for the fielders. Now here's Mark Gray. He's grounded out to first and grounded out to shortstop into a double play. base hit extending his hitting streak now to 13 in a row longest for the Cubs this year in a fastball out away from him well, that's a slider not a fastball but it was out of way and he went right with it try to pull that pitch you're gonna make an out you're gonna hit a nice easy ground ball to an infielder Salazar Salazar has struck out and singled. He was on base to score the first Chicago run. Should be enough room to get under it. High enough. Nope, it's out of play. Keep that ball left the bat in play, and the wind pushed it over toward the box seat. Returning to first base is Mark Grace. You see both style of the Phillies caps there. The old-fashioned ones and the ones that were given out today. Curve for a strike. One ball, two strikes on Salazar. We've seen Salazar play left field and third base in this series. Always starts the season on the bench. And always winds up playing yeah. a lot. Playing a lot. Hits it hard. He's got himself a base hit. Grace goes to second and stops on Salazar's second hit of the afternoon. He loves that high pitch. He got another one up there around the letters again. He stays in the lead on that pitch. 
Pause here for station identification. This is the Phillies Television Network. WTSF, Fox 29 in Philadelphia. It's 3 nothing Cubs. Another right-handed batter coming up, Girardi. He rolled up in the bullpen once again. With uh, Abbott due to lead off the bottom half of the inning, Jim Fergusi may want to make a double change here if he changes pitchers. There are two outs. Abbott got the first two, then gave up singles to Grayson Salazar. Girardi has a single and has scored one of the runs. Two and nothing. It's a situation where the Phillies really don't want to give up anymore. are loaded with Cubs. And Jim is going to make a double change. Well, it was going to be his last batter one way or the other because he was going to be pinch hit for, or since he allowed him to reach, the Phillies are going to bring in a to face Sanchez. Wally Backman will be part of the double move. A double change for the Phillies as Backman comes on to play second for Morandini. A roll comes in to pitch. Three nothing Cubs. We'll be right back. The savings are heating up at Circuit City's Red Hot Summer Sale. Save on this RCA VHS camcorder with six to one zoom, just five forty nine ninety seven. This Technic CD player enjoys super digital sound for a low one nineteen ninety seven, and get unbeatable high stereo values during summer to go. Enter to win a Fantasy Sound Pontiac Grand Am, plus cool stuff from Rolling Stone. If you're thinking of buying a new car, you probably got a few questions, right? Like, what can I buy for a great price? Why should I buy this car? Where can I buy this car? When can I buy this car? Subaru, what you drive? At Windsor Wizards, we'll beat any advertised price, and that brings people in. But it's our service that keeps them coming back, our trained, knowledgeable sales experts, our ability to make special size and shape windows in our own shop, and our customer service department, plus our fast delivery from our used warehouse inventory. So shop the Window Wizard Anderson Window Center near you. Philadelphia, Bristol, Warminster, Upper Darby, Malvern, and Quakertown, PA, Williamstown, Toms River, and Pleasantville, New Jersey. Games. Texaco was captured in on a special videotape. Profiles of Olympic athletes who demonstrated the strength to endure and the energy to go further. This collector's tape is just $4.99 with a fill-up of six and free gasoline. And it comes with a coupon for a free two-liter bottle of Coca-Cola Classic or Diet Coke. Good on your next visit. Get your videotape today at Texaco. Right-hander Bob Aroll takes over here to try to get the third out. The Cubs are ahead 3-0, but they have the bases loaded with two outs. Appearance number is seven for Aroll. He's 0-1, a 1.93 earned run average as he takes over for Kyle Abbott. There's a look at his numbers. Done a pretty good job since joining the Phillies. He'll be in to face Ray Sanchez, who has been a tough customer today. He has singled and tripled. Driving in two runs, scoring another one. Sanchez 
is a reserve and doesn't play much for the Cubs. He came into the ball game with just four hits and has picked up two this afternoon. When you come in a spot like this, you got a first strike. There's one that gets the corner, one ball, one strike. gets an RBI single and the Cubs lead it four to nothing. The Padres pop in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, July 20th, 21st, and 22nd, all at 735. Then the Giants, Friday, July 24th, Saturday, July 25th, and Sunday afternoon at 135 when you get a free sport bottle. 80% of Lexus LS400 owners could afford to drive a car that costs twice as much. So why don't they? Well, for one thing, since its introduction, the LS400 has retained more of its value than any other car in the luxury class. And as any self-respecting capitalist will tell you, it's not what you need that counts. It's what you keep. Come into your New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania area Lexus dealer for some investment advice. You may buy an extended warranty from your dealer, but you don't have to go back there if you've got transmission trouble. Your local Amco Center is authorized by most extended warranty companies to do the work. Why? They've got a lot of stakes, and they know that half the cars serviced by Amco wind up not needing a new transmission. Whether or not your car has an extended warranty, for prompt, reliable service, go where most warranty companies put their trust. Go to Amco. Amco. Double A. MCO. No lines longer than your flight. No. I can't seem to find your reservation. No incomprehensible contract. No cedar stuck on high in August. No hidden charges. And no lemons. National. No problem. After five and a half innings of play here at the Vet, the Cubs lead 4 nothing. Rock organizes the neighborhood to protest a new crack house on the block when rap singer Tony Locke stars on Rock tonight at 8.30 on Fox 29. Wally Backman, now batting out of the number nine spot and playing second base, leads off for the Phillies, hitting for the first time, batting 296. No home runs, five runs batted in for Wally. Mike Morgan throwing a two-hit shutout at the Phillies to this point. Backman, Dykstra, and Amaro at about this inning. Morgan has walked three, one strikeout. And absolutely no trouble. Pitch missed. Phillies have had 
one runner to second base, nobody to third. Two double play ground balls helped him out a lot. Sanchez there. Backman is out, one down. Lenny Dykstra comes up. Lenny has grounded the first and hit a ball to center on which uh, Senzo came in to make a great play. The sun breaks out as Lenny comes to the plate. Same thing happened when he batted in the third inning. It's cloudy just until he stepped in the box. season in the big leagues until last year. Looks like he might have quite a few of them now. Morgan lost his first nine major league starts, but they all came before he was 20 years of age. Mike is now 32. The year that he was drafted, 78, the number one player taken in the draft that year was Bob Horner, taken by the Braves. The Blue Jays had the next pick, and they went for Lloyd Mosby. The third pick belonged to the Mets, and they took Hubie Brooks, and he was picked fourth by the A's. Base hit for Dykstra. Lenny gets the Phillies' third hit of the ball game. Well, he's been getting his hits late in games. Not in the last two games, he's picked up the base hit in his fourth at bat. Leveled off nicely on a high outside pitch. And that's a 10 game hitting streak for Dykstra as Amaro gets in. Ruben has one of the Phillies hits. He has singled and grounded the second. Cubs lead at 4 0 in the sixth. There's a ground ball for Sandberg. Flip it over to Sanchez and back on. And the Cubs have turned their third infield double play. So the Phillies go down and the Cubs lead 4-0 after 6. coming up and all this great stuff at Builder Square. There was a cover-up at the White House. And I was in the middle of it. Halfway there, Mr. President. Yes, yes. He's been long before they barbecued the Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Allen. You're my job, sir. You can time, money, and maybe even your country. Builder Square, the warehouse of everything for your house. We can really get the toy out if we want. And a great deal. Today? Right now, your Toyota dealers say yes to everything. Even a 92 Camry for under $15,000. Yes, we can. Your Toyota dealer is putting it all together. No down payment. No payment for 90 days. And big dealer discounts. We got a great deal. It saves about $1,500. See your Toyota dealers today. While they are saying yes, we can. Oh, 
All-Star voting continues, and your chance to select the starting lineup for the 1992 All-Star Game in San Diego. All-Star ballots available at Philly's home games and at the Philly's ticket office for that during normal business hours. And you ought to give Dalton and John Crutch all kinds of consideration. They're not doing that well in the voting. As Harry Kellis joins us in the seventh. Harry? Thanks, Rick. 4 nothing Chicago, and leading off will be pitcher Mike Morgan. He has not been a bat officially. He has sacrificed and hit a sacrifice fly. Now and one to Morgan. in the air to center field. Dykstra down with his sunglasses. The sun must be tough today. Yeah, it's right above him. You know, there's kind of a haze up there, too, and that even makes, uh, gives off more of a glare. He seems getting in a position here where he can play it out of the sun. He has his sunglasses, but that ball gets right in the middle of that sun. Sunglasses don't always help you. This guy, you know, takes a strike. He's doubled and twice popped up. One of the greatest center fielders I ever saw, Gary Maddox, never liked to use sunglasses. He always said he could figure out a way to play the ball out of the sun. Which he always did, except that one game in San Diego. There you go. <laughs> two of them. Lost two of them. One ball and two strikes. The Pope, Paul Owens, was the manager then, and Jerry was given a pair of sunglasses <laughs> to use. Two and two, the count to Vizcaino. Taps it to third baseman Holland. Jordan held the bag, two down. Philly's so baseball is brought to you in part by your local Hyundai dealers. Test drive his full line of quality cars from Hyundai. Yes, Hyundai. Here's Doug DeSenzo. He's grounded out, popped up, and lined out to center. The guy that has killed the fills this afternoon is... The eight-hole hitter, Ray Sanchez. He was hitting 125 at the start of the game. 125. He weighs more than that. <laughs> That's not even a good bowling score. He rolls in a strike to DeSenzo. in the air to left field. Chamberlain there. Makes the grab. That will retire the side. No runs hit there. None left. Stretch time with the vet. We go to the bottom half of the seventh. Cubs lead 4-0. At 7-Eleven, we look at morning a little differently. It started when store manager John Naparo went out for his daily run. And while thinking of ways to make his store better, it came to him. So now, not only does 7-Eleven carry the best of what you want in the morning, we also try our best to make sure you spend only 30 seconds or less in line, proving once again that inspiration is where you find it. Where 30 seconds or less makes a difference. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. If you're thinking of buying a new car, you've probably got a few questions, right? Like, what can I buy for a great price? Why should I buy this car? Where can I buy this car? 
When can I buy this car? Subaru, what to drive? Where can you get Dunlop tires at the best price? A Dunlop Super 7 dealer. Plus free computer balancing and free road hazard coverage on most models. Only at a Dunlop Super 7 dealer. Who will even rotate your tires free every 7,000 miles and give you free defective tire replacement on most models. You get this. Only these Dunlop Super 7 dealers give you all those free extras. Check their ads in your Sunday paper. The Andrews Sisters take me out to the ball game on Nostalgia Day, 1992, turning back the clock to 1948. The Andrews Sisters with will be in Montreal tomorrow, and Pat Combs will get his first start for the Phils. Combs just called up from Scranton Wilkes Ferry. Mickey Weston will pitch on Wednesday, our first look at Montreal. We're televising those games for you Monday and Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon. One strike to Dave Hollins. He has walked both times that he's been up. Mickey, thanks young man, played golf with him in the Philly Golf Tournament this spring. I understand he's uh, close to a genius. His IQ, yeah, he's one of those real high IQ guys. You wonder how he'll fit this with, with the dude? No, no, no. <laughs> to be with all of us <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the yeah, two. Two. <laughs> sometimes tough to be smarter than everybody else especially your catcher look out right up over our head Jordan. Morgan's first strike, second strikeout. Ricky hits it well to right center, but Desenzo tracks it down at the warning track. Two down. Wynn must be knocking the ball down a little bit in the outfield. It looks like it, it's carrying it across field. It's carrying it towards the right field foul line. Hard to tell those flags up on top of the stadium are blowing straight out, but that usually does the opposite. Yeah. One ball and no strikes to Duncan. Duncan is lined out to center and walked. One and one. Phillies have just three hits. Off Morgan. There's four. Mariano Duncan, a two-out base runner. And we'll bring out West Chamberlain, who was grounded out and grounded into a double play. Morgan has seemed to be able be able to get the ground ball when he wants it. He's had two key double plays. He had three key double plays behind him today. Well, he's made a long ball and trying to get back in this thing. One 
One ball and no strike. That's a really changing stance since he was up here before. He's closed, as you can see, off the plate quite a bit. He slams the ball to left field, but it's caught by Salazar. Oh, he hit it hard, but caught by Salazar to retire the side. No runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the eighth inning. Four nothing, Chicago. Spectacular aerial fireworks displays. Always great nights here at Veterans Stadium. We have two of them this year. Wednesday, July 1st, right after the Phillies Expos game, which starts at 6.35. And Friday, July 17th, after the Phillies Dodgers game at 7.35. Big fireworks display set to music. Compliments of Core States and Star 104.5. Plan to be on hand. Order your tickets easily by calling 463-1000 or stop by the Center City Ticket Office at First Pennsylvania Bank, Center Square. Team meetings here, the twist to 48 Music, Chubby Checker. Brian Sandberg will lead it off. birthday to John Davidson celebrating his 88th and also his golden wedding anniversary today. John's an old buddy. One strike to Sandberg who has walked right out and fouled out. Bob A. Ross came in on the sixth inning. Got a call from an old teammate, Harry, George Broom, who played with in the minor league. I think George is living in Jersey. Jimmy Fielder. He rolls in a strike to Sandberg. He lost a very high pop-up. That's it. <laughs> Dave Holland makes the play. Major League pop-up by Sandberg. Phillies Baseball is brought to you in part by Dunlop Super 7 Dealers. Stop by your local Dunlop Super 7 Dealers for a chance to win tickets to see Team USA take on Team Canada on July 18th. Here's the Hawk. He's one out of three. Is grounded into a double play. Singled and flied out to center. Pirates lead Montreal 5-0 in the fifth inning. Amazing Montreal wins the first three games of that series. And then their ace, Dennis Martinez, is getting beat 5-0. 
but it is very difficult to win a four-game series. I don't care who's pitching, and especially on the road. He had a hack at it, two and one. The only good news about that is that the Phillies will not face Dennis Martinez in that series. Start tomorrow night. The Phillies will get Brian Barnes, Chris Nabholz, and Ken Hill. Against Pat Combs, Kurt Schilling, and Mickey Weston. Grace, he's grounded out, grounded into a double play, singled and scored a run, and hit safely now in 13 straight games. Four nothing, Chicago. We're in the eighth inning. He rolls a no strike. For Gray. He's really been scorching during this 13 game hitting streak, getting well over 400. The batter will be Luis Salazar. He has struck out and singled twice. at first with two down. to Salazar. He won't swing at those pitches down around the no. knees. He wants it up. Up high and waist, waist up. Surprised he didn't go after that one. Well, he, he's probably looking fastball. He got a little slider and He's also a good high breaking ball here, though. He can hit that high slider, high curve. He rolls in one strike. Grace had started and stopped at first base. Not really much of a base dealer. The Cubs are not a running team.
Two balls and a strike to Salazar. In the air to center field, Lenny Dykstra there. That'll retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning at 4 nothing Chicago. Barbecue sister. I got the best steak. I Game. The Phillies will be going to Montreal and Chicago and back home a week from tomorrow night against Montreal. The first visit of the Expos to Veterans Stadium, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 29th, 30th, and July 1st. Fireworks right after the game on July 1st, don't forget. And these will be the last three games until the Phillies return home after the All-Star break. The plan to be on hand to see Montreal. Call 463-1000 or stop by one of the many local Ticketmaster locations. One ball and one strike to count to Steve Lake. Dwight Smith has come in defensively to play right field, replacing Andre Dawson. 53,872 here today. Wow. Tremendous crowd. One ball and one strike to Lake. <laughs> and not had a whole lot to cheer about the 53,000 plus here at the vet. Mike Morgan has shut the Phillies down on four hits. The Cubs lead it four nothing. Hard ground ball to shortstop Sanchez. Blake retired, one down. That'll bring on Jeff Grodewald. Grodewald to bat for a roll. Hey, Rolf going two in a third inning. Charged with two hits and no runs, no strikeouts, no walks. Well, Wald hitting a 250. All of his at bats as a pinch hitter, he's four out of 16. One ball and no strikes to growth walls. One one. Terry Jones. Rivera, Big Ben. Breaking ball, one ball and two strikes. Close. 
two and two. Two balls and two strikes to Broadwall. In the right field, White Smith coming on, makes the play. Broadwall's out, two down, and that'll bring on Wally back when he is grounded out and his loan is bad. at the same time as A-Rolf. One ball and no strike. Nothing. He rolls in one strike to Wally Batman. Fouls it out of play. Two and two. Chicago. Baseball is brought to you in part by Subaru. What's to drive? Ben Rivera is the new pitcher for the Phils. Rivera appearing in his 12th game. This will be his 10th out of the bullpen. He's had two starts. No wins, one loss, a 4 7 ERA. In 24 and a third innings, he's given up 29 hits, 11 earned runs. 
18 strikeouts and 19 walks. Now Rivera coming out here for a roll in the ninth inning. With the Phils trailing by a score of four to nothing. Joe Girardi will be the first one to face Rivera. Down the 23 year old from the Dominican Republic. Turning back the clock to 1948. Down in the uniforms of the 48 season. Rivera, 6'6", 210 pounds. Billy's got him from Atlanta for Donnie Elliott. He can really throw the ball hard. I did throwing strikes with it. He rolls a no strike to Girardi. Girardi is flied out, singled, and walked. Three and nothing. Walked him on four pitches. I'll bring on Ray Sanchez. Sanchez has singled, tripled, and singled to knock in three as Chicago's four runs. With his three hits, he's boosted his batting average 75 points. And he's in 200 now. One and nothing. Fouls it. Out of play down the right field side. One ball, one strike. Nobody out here in the ninth inning. Line drive in the right center. The dice will catch that one. Sanchez out for the first time today. They bring up Mike Morgan. He's 0 for 1. He is Sacrifice to the sacrifice fly and fly it out. Probably will be butting here. Bunch it up in the air foul. Nothing and one to Morgan. Fifty-three thousand plus paid attendance here today on nostalgia day. the ball down in fair territory and Rivera throws him out. Sacrifice is good. It moves the runner to second base. And we'll bring on Jose Vistano. Vistano has doubled. Twice popped up and grounded out. 
Mike Morgan trying to pick his first shot out of the year. He has the show shot out on four hits. Five nothing Chicago. Top of the order coming up. Lenny Dykstra, Ruben Amaro, and Dave Holland. Dykstra is one out of three. He's grounded out five to center and single. Right. 
Two and one. Or would you like to give this huge crowd something to yeah. cheer about? But Mike Morgan is just one of the best games we've seen all year. Three and one. Cubs do have a left hander and right hander up from the bullpen. Austin Mocker and Bullinger. Is the board with a walk. Fourth walk given up by Morgan. Now we'll bring up Ruben Amaro. Amaro has singled, grounded out, and grounded into a double play. Well, he's against Morgan when he's wanted to. He's been able to get ground balls that have resulted in double plays, three of them. He certainly wants to see now. The Phillies have only had one runner reach second base. Steve Lake, who doubled in the fifth. And Larry Boa has not seen a friendly face at third all day. One strike to Amaro. Officially, he has walked twice. New York Mets have taken the lead on St. Louis 5-2. That's well hit the left field, tight to the line. That's out of here. Home run, Dave Holland. Opposite field, Homer, and the Phillies are on the board. It's now 5-2. to two. Number eight, Laura Holland. That's his second left-handed. He hit six of them right-handed. He just reached out on that ball and poked a high outside pitch. You don't think it was even a strike. I mean, that got over the fence in a hurry. Well, Morgan has lost his shutout here in the ninth. It's now 5-2, one out. The batter, Ricky Jordan, he has struck out, grounded into a double play and fly to deep right center. One ball and no strike. Station identification on the Philly Television Network. WTSF, Fox 49 in Philadelphia. Duncan has lined the center, walked, and singled. One strike. Duncan. One and 
The balls and two strikes. the middle, game still alive, second hit for Duncan. Mariano always hits on Sunday. Then we're up 500 on Sunday. And Morgan got this pitch right over the plate, right through the middle of the plate. And uh, something really blistered with Jim the Fever is coming out now and I don't know, I guess the guy's taking him out. Guess he's going to bring in that Bullinger. That's who it is. Jim Bullinger coming on, pitching change for the Cubs. We're in the ninth, 5-2 Chicago, back after these messages. <laughs> Kingdoms are heating up at Circuit City's Red Hot Summer Sale. Save on its Magnavox 1980 TV with remote. Just $2,17.97. Or get 0% interest for six months on this Frigidaire refrigerator with ice makers. Only $5.99.97. And get unbeatable dry stereo values during summer to go. And if you win a fantasy down party at Grand Am, plus cool stuff from Rolling Stone. <laughs> Game time is no time for distraction, which is why we created the 7-Eleven Sports Stop, so you can get everything you need for the big game in one trip, like a major league selection of soft drinks and coolers maintained at 35 degrees cold. But every time it's that food imaginable. Sure, other stores offer convenience, but 7-Eleven has everything a sports fan needs. Everything. For the Sports Stop makes a difference. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Everyone knows when the Wizards beat any advertised price on Anderson and Williamson doors. But we offer a lot more, like a huge selection of wood and steel entry doors, brand new kitchen cabinets, harbor floors and skylights. All this, and we still beat any advertised price. Win the Wizards. Our name doesn't say it all, but our showrooms do. So shop the Win the Wizards Anderson Window Center near you. Philadelphia, Bristol, Warminster, Upper Darby, Malvern, and Quakertown, PA. Williamstown, Tom's River, and Pleasantville, New Jersey. This is about driving. So it's about your car. This is about loving the drive. So it's about choosing the right gasoline. This is about quality. So it's about emotion. This is about excitement. So it's about ultra 94. This is about performance. So it's about a chance to serve you through every grade. This is about wanting it all or getting it all. So like we said, this is about Sunoco. Jim Bullinger, the new pitcher, no wins, no losses, six saves. His ERA, three, nine, five, facing West Chamberlain. Darren Dalton is on back. Ground ball back through the middle. It's a base hit. The Phillies bring the time run to the plate. Darren Dalton will come out and hit for Steve Lake with two men on base and two outs in the ninth inning. Throw the Dutchman. Who leaves the league and runs batted in? We'll bring out Jim Lefevre, and he's going to go to the left-hander, Paul Ossenmacher. He will not let Bullinger pitch to Dalton. He'll call out Ossenmacher. Pitching change for the Cubs, 5-2 Chicago, back after these messages. If you're looking to make summer memories, look no further. Fox 29 EZ 101 and Coca-Cola are teaming up to send 20 gallons of Ford at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg, Virginia for lots of fun and summer memories. 
A new chance to win a grand prize trip to Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Stop by your local Rite Aid store. Step out of entry for it. You could be one of 20 lucky families or four on your way to touch the sky. Climb the mountains and sail the sea this summer at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Brought to you by Coca-Cola, Easy 101, and Fox 29. The road is the ultimate test. It demands the will, the determination, the energy to go further. At Texaco, you'll find that with the insistence to gasoline for improved performance in all our same grades. It's not just in our products. It's also in our service. Everywhere you go. At Texaco, we meet the challenge of the road. And then, go even further. Glasses are always too tight or too loose. Why can't they ever keep their fit? You don't have to take a glasses without fit anymore. Because now lens glasses have so many new ways to make glasses more comfortable. Now lens glasses give you better fit for greater coverage. Lens glasses glasses keep the top point. They keep the glasses like the hinges that hug your head and make you get the hole. Now that's what I call a great fit. And they'll stay fit. Lens glasses better fit for greater comfort in about an hour. strikeout for inning, 27 strikeouts in 28 and two-thirds innings, 10 walks facing Darren Dalton. Dalton's been hitting for a late two men on base, two outs in the ninth. Outside, ball one. Dalton White time is got a tough time with this left-hander, two for 14 White time. Dale Swain has moved into the on-deck circle. Breaking ball, missing. Two and nothing. Two balls and no strikes to Dalton. corner with a breaking ball. Steel slider, good pitch. I mean, good where it was probably what Dalton wasn't looking for and he threw it in a good spot out of way. Got the outside corner. High with it, three and one. Three balls and a strike to Dalton. Duncan at second, Chamberlain at first, two outs in the ninth. Wide ball four, that's going to load him up. And Dale Swain will come out as a pinch hitter. Well, the Phillies have the bases loaded. Two out. And he's got the gym for go. He just does not want to. Watch him. Does not want to have him aggravate that groin muscle pull. Sure, he'd love to use him here in this spot. Dale Swain coming on, hitting a 151, batting 121 right and 170 left. As a pinch hitter, one out of 12 is Bob Scanlon, the Scanman gets up. Bases loaded, two outs. Got the breaking ball over for a called strike.
checked on a down and in breaking ball. Oh, oh Larry Pontino. He didn't even hardly cock his hands on that yeah. one. And Jim Pagosi all over him. Yeah, that, that was, uh, that was, especially at this part of the game where yeah. the Phillies are rallying, base is loaded. Now, now look at this. Now look at this thing. He, he means he's lifting it a bit. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. he, he, he did move the bat. I don't yeah. think he moved it far enough. Now, Close across the plate. Yeah. I put Twain in an 0-2 hole. Tie with it. One and two. Billy's trying for a ninth inning dramatic here. Has scored two, have the bases loaded, two outs. Both. Two and two. He was down and away. He was just, I think, hoping Swain would chase a bad pitch there. The outfield deep for the Cubs. Trying to cut off a ball in the gap. Two balls and two strikes with two outs and the base is loaded. Ball third strike struck him on. Now go end the game. For the Phillies in the ninth, two runs. Three hits. No cub there. Phil's leading loaded. Chicago winning by a score of 5-2. We'll be back with the totals in a wrap in just a moment. <laughs>53,872. The Cubs win by a score of 5 2 for winning Chicago. Five runs, 11 hits, no errors. They left six. Still two runs, seven hits, one error, six left. Still finished with the bases loaded, but Paul Archimonte striking out Dale Swain. Dave Hollins, a home run for the Phillies. 
Winner is Morgan, he's 6-2, and, and the loss goes to Kyle Abbott, he is 0-8. A save for Paul Asamata, who's third. Our next telecast here on the Phil's Television Network will be tomorrow night from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. It'll be Pat Combs going against Brian Barnes. We're on the air for the first of a three-game series with the Expos at 7.30. Check your local listings for the game stayed in your area. Once again, the final score from Veterans Stadium on Nostalgia Day. The Cubs winning over the Phil's behind Mike Morgan by a score of 5-2. Dave Holland's the Phillies home run. For Rick Ashford and Andy Marker, Harry Callis, thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you tomorrow night from Olympic Stadium in Montreal on the Phillies Television Network. Today's game was brought to you by Bud Dry. Dry breed so it drinks light, yet satisfies completely. Find a Bell of Pennsylvania yellow paper. No other book can match it. Bell of Pennsylvania, a Bell of Ladder Company. By your friends at 7-Eleven. Proud to be bringing you Phillies baseball. Ozai Kevin for 7-Eleven. By Very Fine. Great tasting fruit juices and drinks. Taste how very fine it can be. And by your quality plus four dealer, where you can bank on the very best in tires and trucks.